Hey guys, welcome back to AFK Journey. In today's video, we're checking out an updated tier list over on Pridewind. The main thing we're focusing on in this one is Harak. I want to give you guys some thoughts around the guy. I haven't had this much fun playing with him since probably when Taylene came out, I had that much fun. So I've been absolutely loving the guy. And I just remembered, it's been a while since we've done a tier list of video, but as it is an updated tier list video, like we always do with our tier list, we are going to throw a giveaway in this one. $100 giveaway, just be subscribed and leave a comment and you go into the draw and then I'll announce the winner in a a community post but we're going to take a look at all the different areas of him in the tier list and give you guys some thoughts so the first one is going to be we'll start with the afk stages looking at a deficit now let me know in the comments what you guys do for afk stages i'm wondering if there's anyone still like manually pushing trying really hard every day or are most of you guys in the boat that i am now where it's kind of like you know once you hit the soft level cap of the season I kind of just go into auto mode. I come back every day, I click auto and away we go. And that is the way I kind of focus on it. And I think Harak is still amazing for this. Now, obviously you need him at at least Mythic Plus. If not useless, mine is still at Supreme working fantastic on the free to play account. Supreme Plus is obviously going to be extra good because the extra energy is huge. Because as soon as he ults, he just shreds. And then he jumps to the next character, to the next character, to the next character and continues the massacre. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, but yeah, Yes, this guy, I found when I got him uh, to Supreme, put him on auto, he works actually incredibly well in auto teams. Um, you know, you just set it up so you've got some food for him. I normally run him with a low dupe Freyesto anyway, uh, in case he has to eat that. But if he's going to eat an enemy or he's going to eat an ally, it's perfectly fine. Uh, I've also been running him in more control-based teams so that we can survive a bit longer, hopefully eat one of the enemies and away you go. Um, but in general, he is really, really strong. Uh, the reason being, normally uh, you need uh, things like the Odie or the Lily May with the Ignore uh, defense damage or the Smokey obviously with his damage but with Harak he just deals so much damage once he gets snowballing that he can absolutely massacre things uh basically same in Jura's trial Jura's trial I was struggling to get beyond like 25 in anything now everyone that has him I'm just straight up to 35 easy it's it's ridiculous how much he scales to even be viable in PvE uh but it's not as controlled as some of the stock standard teams you'd be looking at and that's why he's in S tier but still an absolutely fantastic deficit pusher now I noticed over here in the battle drills I don't believe they have placed him uh let, let's just go over here and see if they have a yeah so they've left the question mark for battle drills they have haven't put him in yet. I honestly think he's going to be probably around the S tier. Um, he's basically for, for when you got trash mobs, he's going to be great. He's going to like demolish those. When you get into the like the mid boss stages where you got the five very tanky units where he's just going to eat his own team. I don't think he's going to excel too well at those. But then as we've seen him do really well in general bossing uh, across the Dream Realm, I do think he will be good uh, in the single boss stages. So I think that'll probably place him around that S tier, maybe creeping up into S plus for battle drills. Um, like I said, against trash mobs, he demolishes because he just goes kadoof, 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 and it's pretty satisfying. But because they have tuned battle drills down to no longer have as many of those um, you know, those weak enemies in between. It's more focused on the bossing side or the, the heavy uh, enemy side. Um, that's where it's going to come down to either he's good at bosses or he's good at the complete trash, not so good at the in-between levels because there's multiple enemies and he's going to eat his teammates and they're not going to be able to do the AoE damage that you want to do on those stages. So that is the way I am looking at him. I think he's going to be good in two aspects of the battle drills and not the other aspect. Uh, so that's where I think I would float him probably around at the ST here in that one. Once again, that will update after they do more testing as they always do over here on Pride Wind. Uh, we'll jump into PvP next, and then we'll have a chat about the Dream Realm going through specific fights. So over here in PvP, the guy is an absolute monster. Um, honestly, I, I found like the biggest threat for him is Thorns. Uh, the problem is when he decides to go after a Thorn and Thorn's charging, and then he kills the Thorn and the Thorn just goes, Voof, and then he's one shot. That has been my biggest issue with him overall. Besides that, he works incredibly, incredibly well. Uh, I have still been playing him in, because it's free to play, I don't have as many options. I've been still playing him with Vala and Sylvina to try and snipe a back row and move on. Now you can do uh, front row options. Uh, for me, I'm still seeing so many Thorns that I don't like to run him with like Lily Main stuff where I do all the damage up front, then he tries to attack the Thorn, then he gets killed. Uh, I've been avoiding that, so I've been still using the back row snipe method with him, but you'll find with this guy, as soon as he lands a kill, the snowball is ridiculous 
ridiculous. Like it is, it's so so satisfying just watching him go under. Douche dead, douche dead, douche dead. It's crazy. Uh, he's working really well on the Arena Five special. All I do is put uh, Coco on the the front energy spot. I put uh, my Tassie on the back energy spot, uh, and then enemy Lily Mays are always interrupting my Coco, uh, and then my Tassie always goes first. It's just working perfectly for me. Uh, and that does enough damage and control that Harak can then just go zip, 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 zip. Happy days. Really, really solid. Absolutely loving this guy in PvP. And like I said, good in... Um, like in non-celestial hypergem full teams. Like obviously, if you if you have Scarlet and stuff like that, is going to help him along the way. I um I think you know him with other cell hypos is solid, but he works really well with just standard four faction heroes. Uh, especially like I said in the team with like Vala, uh, is just absolutely demolishing things. Uh, I have also sometimes been dropping my Sylvana, just running the Vala and the Tassie because the Tassie does dive in and do that little stun. She's not doing chunks of damage on the front row, so she can contribute to the control aspect which helps him survive because what once again he has to survive until his first kill otherwise he's kind of boned so if he gets controlled and stuff too much early it's not beneficial or if he takes too much damage so i, I do like the tassie tech in there as well um there's definitely different things you can try but overall in pvp the guy can just eat up teams so fast you just need him to at least survive for 12 seconds so he can eat someone even if it's an ally you're good to go he's snowballing it hits Super, super hard. Uh, Dream Realm overall, you can see he is in the S plus with Lily May. Um, let's go over into the Dream Realm only calculations over here uh, for him. Overall, S plus uh, Skyclops. We haven't had Skyclops on global yet. Skyclops comes tomorrow at the time of recording this, and I think this is going to be where we see some massive results over on the test server. This is where he really did shine because you do have the ads in that one as well. And let me just say, Something that with Skyclops you can sometimes get stalled on is not having the damage to deal with them quickly enough so that you can get the damage back onto the boss. This dude, if he ults while those things are up, he just goes tap, 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 job done, we're back on the boss. He does it so quick. So I'm definitely keen to see his results in the Skyclops over on the global server when that happens tomorrow. That's going to be an exciting one. Croker, they haven't filled in yet. Uh, I... He, I, he wasn't in the best teams for Croker. Um, I think you can still get away with him. Um, you know, if you're using Taylene, he's gobbling Taylene. But I think with Croker, normally you want Taylene just hammering in the damage. Um, so I, I think he'd probably be around maybe the A to S levels. I haven't seen damage spreads on like some of the end game players to see like the difference between Herak teams and other teams. So I can't comment on that one yet. Uh, Necro Dracon, obviously he has the movement in there as well. Absolutely fantastic, dominating at the damage over there. Snow Stomper, S plus as well, dealing massive, massive damage over there. I mentioned before, mine was a bit bugged. I I got through an entire battle without him eating, uh, or until like 12 seconds left. He didn't eat one of my allies. I think there was something bugging out with my Lily May dodging the snowball and him trying to maybe eat the snowball or the... I don't know how it was working. I had horrible luck with him on Snow Stomper. I could not get him to work. That is just me. Others have been absolutely dominating with it, so it might, might have been a strategy skill issue, if you will for me on that one. Lone Gaze, once again, doing solid. I personally didn't get as good of results with him on the Lone Gaze. I think this is one of those ones where you need a really solid balanced team. Uh, I think the best Lone Gaze team with him was using Rainier as well to move uh, Smokey up front. So Smokey was avoiding the damage and then having a chunky-ish Rainier being able to survive uh, with some extra damage mitigation provided by the... Um, the Freyesto clone. I don't have the Rainy built up uh, it, on my free to play, so it wasn't working as well for me with Lone Gaze as like a standard team, but still. It still worked decently well. And obviously, once you get into those whale zones, it gets a lot better. And just know with him, Freyesto is going to be like hand in hand with him. If he's working well, he's normally going to be working well with Freyesto. Um, and then any combination of like Mikola, Smokey Mickey, sometimes Lily May gets in there, sometimes the Rainier does. You know, it just depends. But in, in general, Harak plus Freyesto is going to be a thing. The better your Freyesto is, the better your teams are going to go. I'm using low dupe Freyesto, so it is going to sacrifice my runs a little bit, but it is still pretty solid. Uh, and then obviously on Orson, he can do massive, massive damage as well. You're running him, you're not running the Lily May or anything in that team. Normally you're going to be running with the Elsa to go ahead and keep the shields down so that he can demolish. The idea is to keep Elsa healthy enough so that she is the last one to be eaten so that he can actually deal 
the maximum amount of damage and not get hit by the damage mitigation. And then we did have the Crystal Beetle. I saw some decent teams in Crystal Beetle. He ended up not being in the absolute best team. He was looking good very early on uh, from the testing from the global server, but he did drop off a little bit there. But in general, the dude is just a beast. If you do want to go for him, I think he's a pretty safe option to have a ton of fun and also have very decent results with. I think he's a really nice implemented character. Um, I know people who don't have the resources are going to think it's a bit unfair in the, um, in the dream realm with a bit of quote-unquote power creep. But I, I think, you know, in, in maybe two of the bosses, he's like going to be like next level annoying if you don't have the others i think you can still make do and still do perfectly well over on my main account i'm still in the top 20 without him um still pushing so i'm not too stressed of pulling him on there but like i said i did pull him on my test server account which i'm having an absolute blast but that covers it for the tier list let me know what you guys think what are your favorite teams with him if you are using him and as always thanks for watching hope you have an awesome day and i look forward to seeing the next one cheers